All right, guys, here we go. It is a we're doing Chris Chan, a comprehensive history part 54 by Gino Samuels. There we go. There we go. There we actually go. What made her this way? What is the attraction? Oops. I don't know. What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. Of Christian Washington Chandler. My farming is not it right now. Holy moly. On March 18th, 2017, Christine went to the social media site Twitter to say that people must not let themselves be blinded impulsively. Her post was accompanied by a photo of herself covering her eyes with her hair. Oh, very poetic, Christine. Thank you. On March 11th, in response to animator and voice actress Doopy Doover's tweet regarding advice to stop pooping, Chris replied what? saying that she would just let the poop fall out, since pent-up poop can be bad for the body. Also at around that time, Incredible. Chris listed more sets of stamps taken from her father's collection up for sale on eBay. The newest batch was priced at $20 each, a significant increase on the previously listed items. Do we know how much these stamps are actually worth from from the from the father stamps? Like seriously, um, what's the what's the actual value of the stamps? That's my biggest question here. This time, she poop, spent yeah. less time on Facebook and moved over to Twitter as her social media of choice, mostly replying to posts written by celebrities she followed, such as My Little Pony voice actress Tara Strong and Doopy. Christine returned to Facebook briefly on March 18th to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day and posted a new drawing of her car, Sanchu, standing upright in its Transformers-like configuration. Oh. She also made a brief post, advertising her personal stamp collecting book from her childhood, up for sale on eBay for $1,000. Oh, the next day, she pleaded for someone to buy her stamps because her family was in need of money. Her Facebook friend, William Elliot Waterman, commented that she had recently bought new Lego sets after selling some stamps and asked how did her purchases help pay the bills. Chris clarified that she did not buy any Lego sets and that the money went towards their debtor payments. Her other Facebook friend, Kim Wilson, offered some additional clarification for Chris and anyone reading. Upon checking her purchase history, Kim wrote that Chris generally spent the money on Lego and toys, and if there was any money left over, it might contribute towards paying the bills. In response to Christine's plea for buyers, she sold six sets of stamps, totaling at around $40. On March 18th, Christine posted a video on YouTube in which she sings the song Caribbean Amphibian from the children's TV show Sesame Street, impersonating the My Little Pony character Fluttershy while filming the My Little Pony figure that she customized to look like herself. She then tweeted the video at Fluttershy's voice actress, Andrea Libman. On March 22nd, Doopy Doover tweeted an animated gif of a scene from the Japanese anime series Spice and Wolf, featuring the woman wolf character Holo on a bed with her rear facing the viewer, swinging her tail seductively. <laughs> Doopy <laughs> wrote the that she considered the animation horrendous and blamed it for ruining her day. Christine disagreed, stating that the gif lured her in hypnotically. Ew. <laughs> the next day, Doopy wrote that she was bored as an adult because it was 1 a.m. and there was no one she could spend time with. Chris replied to her, hard. writing that she had trouble sleeping and was tired and bored from trying to fall asleep, and that she wanted to be done adulting with a lady friend and be a pony. Doopy later added that she would drive to someone else's house at 1am just to watch something on the movie and series streaming platform Netflix and draw on her laptop because she simply liked company. Chris replied that she would appreciate the company too. Wow. On March 24th, in response to an article published on Huffington Post regarding a teenage boy filing a lawsuit because he didn't want to share the school bathroom with a transgender student, Chris wrote on Facebook, I say to Joel Doe, suck it up, kid. If a lack of a penis on someone bothers you, look at someone else who has one. After all, a penis is an outward grown. Wait, what? Hold on. Gender Spington post regarding a teenage boy filing a lawsuit because he didn't want to share the school bathroom with a transgender student. Oh, okay. When it bothers you, look at someone else who has one. After all. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see why you would be a little uncomfortable. You know, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I guess. Uh. A penis is an outward grown clitoris. On March 28th, Christine informed her followers that she created a prototype of Sonic merchandise and would give it away in a raffle, which could only be entered with the purchase of any of her stamp-related items on eBay. Other runner-up winners could also get Christine Chandler collectible Skylanders cards and t-shirts. Wow. She displayed only the shadowed silhouette of her new character design, Islanders. but could be gathered that it was customized from an existing Transformers figure. On April 2nd, she revealed via a 48-minute long YouTube video that the new figure was in fact Sanchu and was customized from parts taken from three Transformers character figures. Breakaway, Sawback, and Hot Rod. This video is brought to you by the Stamps on Christine Chandler's 
eBay shop. From Mr. C's clamp stamp collection to her late father, you are eligible to buy among which any purchase up to the date of April 31st will result in an automatic entry to win the toy featured in this video. Not only do they get this toy, but they also get they also get the Skylander self-figure. I can't even hear what's going on. The self-Skylander car that is completely functional on Skylanders Imaginators for the leading console playing Nintendo Switch. And now, on with our show. Wow. Our all-black friend, Dr. Modus. What do you think of that, Rosie? I think it was neat. I'll tell you one thing. I knew when he was an escort. And what? now, he has a lot more to focus on. Horde! <laughs> yeah, the PlayStation music is, is quite literally the best part of this. Yeah. Automobile joke. Autobots roll out. <laughs> Automobile joke. What the fuck? On April 4th, in response to an <laughs> so article stupid. concerning discrimination against transgender people from landlords, Christine okay. wrote on Facebook that despite many people online telling her to get a job, she felt that she couldn't because trolls had ruined her background check results. In addition, she thought she would get discriminated. I mean, that's probably true. But also, I think that Chris originally never wanted to work, didn't really work, and now they just have a good excuse not to work. You know what I mean? Um against not only because of her autism but also because she was a lesbian trans woman chris added that she didn't get a job because she had already held a full-time position as a caretaker for her father before he passed away in 2011 and is that true i feel like that is not true i don't think that he did anything or she did chris work as somebody that was a caretaker for their father i feel like that's not true at all are we rewriting history christine her mother Finally, she added that she still had trouble shaking off her feelings of lingering shock that prevented her from drawing and writing her books. Also at around that time, Doopy Doover wrote on Twitter that just because she drew porn did not mean that it was an invitation for people to be creepy towards her. Chris replied okay. that she felt the same way, admitting that she had drawn scandalous imagery like that in the past, accepting it for what it was despite not being proud of doing it. The next day, she informed her followers that she hated the mortgage servicing platform Ceteris Mortgage because they seemingly, deceivingly overpaid too much of the family's mortgage, leaving Chris's mother Barbara's bank account over $800 in debt. Wow, that's in response, terrible. her trollsome gal pal Kim Wilson wrote that Chris should try. Isn't that the worst though? Like if you uh, if you if you have to pay money uh, out of like your bank, they'll they'll charge you more money even to just move it from like your savings to your checking. It's actually very annoying. Like how are you gonna take more money from some poor person who already couldn't pay their bills? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, cheeseburgers for dinner, baby. Love sounds good. Try and get a job if they were in financial trouble. She wrote that they had previously discussed that her criminal record would not pose a problem to employers, and clarified that Chris chose not to get a job because it did not fit in with her lifestyle. Chris later went to Twitter to ask her half brother, <laughs> Cole Smith, "Wait, what?" Because it did not fit it would not pose a problem to employers, and clarified that Chris chose not to get a job because it did not fit in <laughs> with her lifestyle. <laughs> That's incredible. Me too. That's why I don't want to work. It's interesting though because Chris has the opportunity. Christine, whatever. The opportunity to work by selling things on the internet. People are they just at this point I'm pretty sure there's a ton of like back orders for like Christian like Christian merchandise, but they just don't want to work and do that stuff. But that's it. So they they could easily get a job if they really wanted to, but they just are refusing to do so. That's like the biggest problem here, I think. Chris later went to Twitter to ask her half brother, Cole Smithy, for oh financial my, help. Oh my god. On April 6th, Why would he Kiwi that? Farms user Buck Mullet impulsively text messaged Chris to offer to pay $1,000 for the paper mache Sonic the Hedgehog totem, which Chris created during his time in Providence Middle School and could. What the fuck? Did I, I feel like I've never seen this before. Are we supposed to know that this thing exists? What the hell is that? That's horrifying. What the fuck? Dude, what the fuck am I looking at right now? This is horrific. <laughs> Are you seeing this thing? I'm, I have, I'm gonna have nightmares. I'm gonna have actual nightmares. Be seen in the background oh of summer for videos. Chris replied, That's stating insane. that she was very willing to sell the totem to Buck Mullet. However, the Kiwi Farms user then informed her that they would only pay the one thousand dollars if she contacted Virginia's Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services first. Oh Chris then God. realized that they were a troll and called them trolling stupid. Inspired okay. by the seeming interest in her Sonic Totem, she officially listed it up for sale on eBay for $1,500. Curiously, she listed the item in the subcategory of Mexican folk art. On April 
<laughs> I fucking get. I can't. Seventh. Dude, look, that thing is horrible. Mex. I mean, I'm not trying to be like racist or anything, but if you if you told me that was Mexican folk art, I might believe it. I might believe that. I don't know, you know. And I'd say it looks beautiful. I wouldn't even question it. I don't want you to think I'm racist, you know. I'd be like, wow, beautiful, you know. She made a video to advertise the listing. Definitely for a limited time, so you want to rush to get, you want to rush to buy this before April 30th. The Sonic Tom pool I made in our class so many years ago. And I give you a full three cents deep. Anyway, so here's the bonus offer. So that's that all. Because of my special giveaway, if you buy this, wear a shirt that fits for the set price and no lower. Because I'm not negotiating on prices on this and the stamp album. Yeah, you do this. I'll make a fourth Sanchu figure. And I'll send him along with this guy. And of course, you also get my Skylander figure and my Skylander card, oh. both functional for Skylanders Imaginators. Yeah. Also, t-shirt. Why do you have sh why do you have a t-shirt? Wait, these are like do you you paid money to see that? Can you even sell that t-shirt technically though? I mean not that Christine would care, but like it's still a Skylander like intellectual property, no? Like isn't that how that would work? What are you doing? You're printing out t-shirts? Uh, I don't know. You could probably come up with a better idea. I just feel like if you don't have money, why are you wasting on this dumb shit? They also have t-shirt companies like online that'll that'll just print out whatever your design is like to order for people so hundred dollars one thousand five hundred i'll put the listing for this thing on ebay in the description down below thank you okay. wait, four what, hours wait, what was that wait this is like a re random pause. This was at the end of the video. The randomly selected winner's prizes are separate from both automatic winner's prizes, which means that if neither the book or totem are sold, the 16 random winners will still be selected and rewards as previously stated, respectively. The major difference being that if neither the book or totem sold before April 30, 2017, no t-shirts will be awarded to anybody. If would be unable to afford the shirts without the help, with that, here are the friendly rem Okay, interesting. A little content advisory there. Okay, uh, whatever. Four hours after the Sonic Totem was put up on eBay, it was legitimately purchased by a willing buyer. One hour after that, Christine purchased a 14 karat gold necklace for $400, intended as a replacement for the necklace which her mother Barbara had to pawn off to repay the mortgage. The Over the next three days, she spent a further $750 on her custom Skylanders merchandise, which she planned to give away in a raffle. On April 10th, Chris posted a YouTube video advertising her stamp book, which was still up for sale on eBay. It's like a little bit of a waste of money there. The old signatures, huh? So I understand wanting to your mother to get their necklace back or whatever, but that seems like a not good use of their money. Um, especially considering they didn't even buy back the... Like, if it was a necklace that you were like, yeah, this has been in my family for, you know, such and such amount of time... It means a lot to me. I wanted to keep it, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, okay. I mean, that makes sense to me. Like, I can understand why you might want to do something like that. But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about, a f you just bought another fucking necklace. Oh, I just lost it. I'm getting my ass crammed right now. You didn't You didn't buy anything with, like, any sentimental value. So it doesn't make sense. And it's confusing. What the hell? It's just ridiculous. I mean, that this thing is reading my handwriting backwards. I mean, this is my handwriting back, sincerely, back from 1992. And that way spells good for at first, but then I had changed my name around that time afterwards. And so I ended up just adding in pencil, just went from Christian to Christ from Christopher to Christian right there. I assure you that is me, definitely. Me, my own handwriting. I mean, just, you can't do much better matching my handwriting of the past compared to my handwriting of the present. Okay? Uh, my father taught me how sure. to attach all these stamps, and I put them into the categories of the countries. Uh, there was there used to be a stamp shop at Smart Charlottesville that I got all these stamps from. It's just randomly, a few at a time, though. Yeah, some of them. Mm. Now, help us break even for at least right now. I'll find a stamp album. Be an instant winner, because I will be having make three, aside from the prototype, three Sanchu figures. I got the two, I got two of them in the works. So I got had, but I'm hoping we sell this one. If, if this one sells, I'll definitely make the third one, as I have stated now. Okay, so, and also aside from that, uh, the first 
of the returning Captain's Log videos will be later this week, probably on Thursday or Friday. That's my that's my guess. I have a mild topic to talk about then. So I look forward to that. Okay. Fine. Thank you very much and have a good day. What the fuck? <laughs> on April 12th. Was that on intentional? A made by Doopy concerning her inability to fall asleep because she woke up feeling really motivated. Christine replied that she also experienced that sensation, attributing it to her fickle circadian rhythm or internal clock. Yes, yes. Not yes, long of after, course. in response to some crass comments regarding Chris's past actions, Doopy responded that she had only positive experiences with Christine and could not make fun of her anymore, possibly acknowledging that she had known of Chris Chan from before. Mm. Kristen thanked Doopy for defending her and sent her lots of love. Wow, very nice. Also on that day, Kiwi Farms user sending her lots of loves or LOLs. Right? That's what my that's what my mom told me that LOL means. That's why she's always says LOL to me. Like when my dog died, she's like, I'm so sorry your dog died, LOL. I was like, thanks, mom. I really appreciate that. I love you so much. Bitch. Built evidence that they had purchased the Transformers Megatron pistol toy from Chris during August of the previous year, which was notably featured in the 2007 video wherein Chris uses wow. it to shoot at Adam Stackhouse's face for winning the Parappa the Rapper song competition. Oh yeah, cool. The Red Baron paid $50, and the item arrived in its original box, complete with most of the optional attachments, projectiles, and the original receipt of purchase, showing that Christian bought the toy from the game place on February 4th, 2005. The next day, okay. she completed a Facebook quiz to find out what would be her name and personality if she were a My Little Pony character. She posted that her name would be Nightstar, and that she would be a fun-loving unicorn who loved to dance with a pink body and turquoise hair, and the cutie mark of a shooting star on her hind. On April 14th, Kristen- uh, what, Hind? Hind? It's a word? Probably. Hind? I don't like that word. It makes me uncomfortable. Uploaded an emergency donation plea video featuring her mother. Action. My name is Barbara Chandler. We are in. Yeah, Barbara's looking into my soul right now. This is insane. This is insane. In an emergency situation, Rappahannock is getting ready to cut our service. What is that? That will stop us from doing anything, cooking, whatever. Okay. Please, somebody. Buy the stamp album for a thousand dollars to help us with our emergency. Thank you. Later that day, Chris live streamed on YouTube, hoping to reinvigorate interest in her business by making an effort to create more Captain's Log type videos. Good evening, this is Christine Chandler coming to you from home once again. But for the first time in a long time, this is Captain's Log Start Date 04. One four two zero one seven, okay. and I'm trying it in a different format. Obviously, I got a microphone attached to my head, but hopefully this time my voice will be louder than the music that I'm still forced to have to block out. Anyway, so let's talk a little. Hey, you, can you not turn the music off or something? Like I don't understand. Like what's happening here? Are you just unable to turn off the PlayStation music? Am I dumb? Like I, you can't just turn that off. <laughs> what the hell? A little bit more about Sanju, the Autobot figure that you can win for wow. a limited time. So, first time I'm attached to Sanju in this way, it's like a kind of a bit of a godmaster because I am god of this dimension of Quickville, Virginia. Okay. Anyway, first is the rocket pack. As you've seen in various photos on Facebook, it looked like a bobsled. I, had to I like to bear design this way, okay? So, this goes onto his back, into this, into that slot, right there, the middle piece, goes there. And this part, you know, goes into his butt. Goes into his butt. Now there's something kind of cancer about him there. Cancer? Flying out from the rocket pack. We fly. I believe I can soar. And that would I be agree. Sorbet meowing. I agree with the cat. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention I wanted to just get this off the record. Yeah, more than a month ago, I got free, I got offered for... Free LGBTQ items, including this bracelet. All I have to do is pay two dollars shipping. Now this bracelet, I also got this necklace. So, yeah, they're just little inexpensive things that all I did was pay shipping for. They were free. So, no allegations, no suspicions there. Okay. And of course, one thing that is true: the earlier video where my mom talked about, yes, we need more money in this house. We managed okay. to get a little loan for the minimum money amount for the electric company, but. Rest of the month. I hate the second half of the month. 
where we had all we had the money from Social Security, but then we spent all on bills and food to make sure we got enough from this house and bills and food. By the way, here's like eight thousand figures that I have in front of me. Like, dude, stop! <laughs> like, you keep buying fucking garbage. It's not just for bills and food. What are you like stealing the money? This is <laughs> ridiculous. Like, how do you feel bad for this person? I guess I kind of feel bad for Barb, but you know. They did waste all their money, the inheritance money that they got from, like, Chris's, Christine's grandfather on a, a lawyer because they wanted to attack somebody. So I don't know what to really think anymore. And as for the sale of the totem, guess where that most of that money went? More than 700 bucks worth. The t-shirts and Skylander functioning cards. So why, maybe you just shouldn't have done that. Yeah, we uh, spent it all on t-shirts and cards. Well, why would you do that? That's your. That's the problem. That is what. That's the issue. Stop spending it on dumb shit. Like that. There's your. That's your issue. Oh my God. That's still. We had a lot. But still, and then more happened. Yada yada. A whole bunch more. I don't know. It's all for me to look up on my statements. Now I'm not going to share because that's private, personal information. Sorbet, are you doing something over there messing with the? Uh... What the hell, Sorbet? Get out of there! Get out of there! Excuse me. Get out of there, boy. Come on. Jeez, why? Everything happening? Bad luck over here. It's not been such a good Friday for me. God dang it. What are you doing? Everything happened. Storm Bank, don't mess with cables. I keep telling you not to mess with the cables, boy. What's wrong with you? <sighs> the things boy, I do for love. You? The things I do for love. Anyway, somebody, anyway, please buy the stamp album. $1,000. You get the album no. with all the stamps in there. Ten no. bonus UN covers and bonus stamps in little envelopes. You're starting to... They're looking on my nerves, boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stay with me. All right? Stay with me so I know you're not messing around. Yes, we love you. All right. Anyway. What's it talking about? All right, the sale of that and... I still have a few pieces of Science Shoe artwork that I did back in 2014 that I tried to sell on eBay, didn't sell. I still have them. I'll put them back on there. $500 a piece, no negotiations. Did the mom just. <laughs> what did the mom get there? That's it's scary. Barb's just hanging out. It's kind of scary when I look back up. I'm a little terrified now. Oh my lord. That's spooky, bro. That is spooky. Okay. More money in this house, guys. I'm doing all I can around here. Financial messes and everything. God. Uh, we need hello. We're live on the internet. What do you want, hey, mom? Hello. We need a bag of cat food. Dry cat food. Okay, I'll go out later and get some of uh, the little money we have left. Yeah. Use well. my yeah. New account. Yes, dear. I'll come up and get that later. Sorbet, what are you doing? Yes, dear. Hmm. Come on. What are you doing? Get away from me. Okay, anything else? Yeah, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing the first official Captain Log video. I'm live streaming it. Yelling at the cat, clearly. I'm live streaming it instead of pre-recording. So, yeah, we're live on the internet. Smile for the PlayStation 4 camera. And then remind them that we can use a lot more money in this house. Okay. Uh, I've been venting about that. Anyway, all right, well, I'll go out later and get some, get some more dry cat food. All right, so that's all that. And this is Raw Stuff, live from Brooklynsville, Virginia. It's Friday evening. Oh. Tune in tomorrow night where I watch the 2015 episode of Saturday Night, streaming through the internet, and y'all get live responses to that. Thank you. Good night. Damn, bro. I'm getting eviscerated here. Here we go. The next day. Chris live-streamed a video of herself watching an episode of the comedy TV show Saturday Night Live, which featured Donald Trump. Yes. You, have a, you have a good flight? Yes. Yes. Wow, YouTube copyright was crazy back then, huh? Um, <laughs> do people watch this? They're just watching a show, but you can't see it. Does anybody actually watch this stuff? Okay. Governor O'Malley, everyone. <laughs> what was that That's funny? all the time we have for this guest. <laughs> Our next candidate this evening is hot off crushing the Benghazi hearings. Please welcome Hillary Clinton. 
Jesus. <laughs> what the fuck? Cute. 11 hours, baby. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't break me and they never go. Oh my god. During the stream, low efforts trolls, or weens, repeatedly called her phone, through which she was streaming, which caused the video to go down several times. <laughs> Bible 17th, funny, Chris sorry. slashed the price of her stamp album by half, now for sale from eBay for $500. Later that day, she tweeted, Flee Namaka, Pinapaka, Inky Pinky Poo Boo. Wow. April 19th, welcomed really several good. updates regarding her sales on eBay. Firstly, she listed six older drawings of her Sonichu characters, which originally were posted on the auction site in 2014 and failed to be sold off. Chris added that the new items were posted to help out her financial situation, since by this point, she had failed to ship the Sonic Totem to its buyer, who then complained to eBay about it and so got their payment reversed, oh leaving Christine's God. PayPal account $1,450 in debt. Why, why didn't Christine just sell the thing? I don't understand. Like they sold, they actually got somebody to pay seven hundred and fifty dollars for that piece of crap, and then they just never sent it off. Why? How how much could you need money if you're too lazy to go to the post office? I don't understand. Like you're doing it to yourself at this point. Well, you've been doing it to yourself for most points, I suppose. Uh, I guess you could say. But that's insane. What are you doing? She later posted that after a long period of searching through 10 or 20 laundry bags filled with old, wet clothes, Chris uncovered the striped shirt, which he often wore during the 2000s, and was referred to by avid followers of Chris, or Christorians, as the classic. At oh. first, she thought that the shirt had been destroyed in what she stated was the house fire of January 10th, 2017, but okay. nevertheless checked again and found it. It was in need of repair, and would be restored to its former glory, using some of the money made from selling it to a willing buyer. She posted the classic shirt on eBay with an opening bid of $12,000, or a buy it now price of $20,000. What the f She soon followed up with a YouTube video advertising her listing, marking the first time the shirt appeared in a Chris video since November 2009. Captain's log, star date, Zero one. Oh, sorry, guys. Somebody call. Somebody call my phone. All right. Seven. We have resurrected this old antique, the very same shirt that you've seen me wear in the comics, as uh, shown between. I mean, like you could definitely sell that shirt. I just don't know why you'd think that twelve thousand dollars is a, is a, is a good amount of money for that. Uh, that's insane. But you are Chris Stan Chance. Uh, I guess that makes sense. These two. At least uh, to make it to prove my point. <sighs> uh, you know, does anybody just pretend that they already have the uh, the real shirt by like buying another one and saying, "No, this is the actual real shirt," because um, that would be interesting. All right, we'll do more than twenty bags. This is what I stated in my Facebook post, and fortunately, this was not in a bag that had the dirt and wall lining into it. No, this was just really, really damp. It was in the. It was possibly close to the bottom of the uh, mountain of was clean laundry that was stacked in front of the dryer before the fire house fire 2014 January 2014 I mean look at how badly faded that tag came out and that was the tag on the back of this shirt all right but fortunately I was able to look closely and further examine it so I'll be posting this onto my onto the eBay page shortly but right now I'm just gonna read it to you as I have put in my notepad so, all right so this Shirt, first off, I'm going to state, is more than 14 years old. And we have bought this, and my mom and I, my family and I, we have bought this shirt, among other clothing, in one of the Goodwills. I don't know which one, but out of the final selling amount, this thing, so we're hoping it's going to be on. Uh, I mean, bid if you're seriously going to pay. 
okay? And I want to be paid. I want to be paid immediately after the listing ends, okay. which should be sometime on fr Friday, the twenty-first. First off, this shirt is a polo shirt from Ralph from from Ralph Lauren. This shirt was made in the USA. It's one hundred percent cotton, and it is a size L, large. So you can put on a little time to be big again, and like, oh, you're going to me. So put that on your put that on your quickie. All right. So anyway, I guess that's about it for this week's Captain Log because I got because I can't think of too many other things. My brain is knocked out. My brain is blank, and I definitely and I've realized where today dementia, the umbrella term for all the mentally wearing down people. I got some dementia. Okay, so give me time, give me space. All right, give me some slack. I have, have dementia. What do you mean you have dementia? Wait, is wait? I feels like the reason that why would Christine say that unless she started educating herself on dementia? Does like there, does the mother like have dementia? Did the doctor reference that? And they're like, oh, I have this as well. Oh my god, this is insane. Oops. Come on. Nice. How do I get this thing to stop? Not long after, bidding officially began on the shirt, with gradually increasing bids presented by Weens unwilling to actually pay the amount. What is a Ween? After only three days, Wiener? the auction of the item concluded with a winning bid of $25,100. On April 22nd, Christine left an update on Facebook, writing that her mother Barbara had borrowed money out of their life insurance to help pay for some important household items, and pay for the shipping of the sold Sonic Totem, which was successfully delivered to its buyer in one day. However, she was still waiting for payment clearance from the mother of the person who was supposed to pay for her classic Ralph Lauren shirt, claiming that not only would the mother be contributing to the historic restoration of a very unique artifact, but she would also improve the artist's family's life. Meanwhile, upon receiving the Sonic Totem, the buyer then released the $1,500, giving it back to Chris. Afterwards... Wow, they actually paid him back. I'm surprised, but okay. Um, cool. Them, they went to whoever. the video game discussion forum of the image board site 4chan to post photos of the delivery box and the contents within, which included a handwritten certificate of authenticity, which erroneously stated that the item was a one-of-a-kind hand drawing penned by Christian Weston Chandler and wow. the Sonic Totem itself. They also left positive feedback on Chris's eBay account, simply writing that the item arrived safely. That's on April 27th, good, Christine delivered another captain's log addressing some of her recent happenings. I got a lot on my mind. Just whatever. And... Well, yes, uh, currently I'm still having financial problems and I'm uh, still waiting for the payment on that shirt. At least the first of three settled payments. Uh, are you lady in Wisconsin? You're not so cheesy right now. Yeah, promise first payment tomorrow. Well, if you don't make it, I'm putting my foot down. Uh, we could talk about uh, other things that I've been through the past week. I went over. I went to the UVA a couple of times last week. Actually, um, I went to to the UV, to the Pride Week event last Thursday. Went to the barbecue. Okay. We have nice folks. We have nice pe nice people of the of the community over in the over in the center, and uh, they certainly we had a good time. I made I made friends with some more with some more of them. It, okay. it was good. It was real good. Um, let's see what else happened. Um, well, okay, uh, last uh, f last three Wednesdays, I've uh, been attending uh, caregiving classes over at the Martha Jefferson. Uh, Interesting. So they, they want to potentially be a caregiver. Okay, like, fine. But the reason that that's so dumb and interesting is that you just said that you were a caretaker for your your father, but you never were actually a caretaker. That's what this that's what this means, that you never actually were a caretaker for your father. I mean, not that we needed to discredit that, because I, mean, I think we are all already kind of knew that was going to be fake. But still, I mean, because he said before, it's like, oh, I used to be a caretaker for my father. It's like, no, you didn't, you lying fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? To help to expand my mind on the caregiving for my mom around here and there. That was good. I have definitely learned a lot in my noggin, and I have paper materials to help out with that. Wow. Among wow. which, a few of the uh, highlights. Uh, definitely learned more about uh, dementia, and that being the umbrella term for all the mental conditions and whatnot. Umbrella, umbrella. Uh, anyway, so I'm just blank here and there, I just went blank. I hate when that happens. Okay. Anyway, uh, it was good. All the classes were good. I definitely recommend it if you're at least caretaking for a family member. 
or have been pretty much doing that all your life if you're I feel like you it's not like a recommendation I feel like you have to take these classes to be a caretaker no like am I wrong about that well, that seems like an objective truth like you it's not like oh yeah you can you can if you want no you, you have to right am I fucking stupid or pretty sure you have to take these classes if one of your, your parents I recommend getting it if you want your actual license because I yeah I ended up with that twist of fate Twist of fate, twist of lemon, lime. Incredible. Mm. Anyway, anyway uh, financial crisis aside, uh, we're still faring okay. Yeah, we have food here at home. And I'm still able to cook. At least I can cook a good meal and uh, keep our house uh, a little bit pleasant like that. Mm. Up, Red have a good day. Thank you. You too. On April 29th, oh, okay. Chris announced that despite still not receiving any payment from the buyer of her shirt, she would attempt to repair the classic herself and film the process after going through several tailors and cleaners who told her that it was quote-unquote beyond help. Y'all know are very well aware of my shirt. The iconic shirt. Yeah, needs a lot of mending repair. It's a too, apparently too big of a project for a tailor to mend, so I'm personally going to do it myself. Uh, unfortunately, I had not received my payment from the highest bidder, and since uh, time ran short, until I hear from, uh, unless she pays before I hear from the new bidder, I'll have the uh, new the new lower bidder down of which I have whom of which I've contacted, uh, of which of which I contacted. Uh, he okay. pays, you know, the whole amount or in payments that's between me and him. Anyway, so uh, because my mother got her money for a little while, I'm gonna. Pretty much take it to mind myself. I got the material. I got materials I need. Like I got pin cushion, some pins, quarter cut fabrics. That was a blessing. And thread. Oh, All three colors: red, this. white, and navy blue. Anyway, so pretty much I'm going to do a montage along the way of uh, mending the shirt, recording that on my phone at least. I don't know how to do this. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. And then, after this thing gets attached, enjoy the show. This was followed by a series of five videos uploaded over the next few days, consisting of her attempting to sew the holes in her shirt. <sighs> I just want to... <sighs> I don't feel like I'm getting smart from this, and that's not... I'm going to turn on Frasier. Um... All right, Frasier. She also accompanied the videos with photos posted on Facebook, displaying the gradual process of her restoration. On May 1st, Chris addressed some of the negative comments left on her sewing videos. Just listen, everyone. This shirt has been through a lot in its 14 plus year lifetime, especially with me wearing the thing. How did I get so many holes? Probably like moths, right? Probably like moth holes. Because that's a lot of holes in a shirt. I've worn it at least half the time I drew and wrote to the pages of my first 11 Sonichu books, books 0 through 10. Not to mention at some of the Fridays at Pokemon TCG League, when it was at the game and hobby place, and it was definitely worn at least half the times when I went and tried, waited, hoped, prayed and even paced between Fashion Square, Piedmont Virginia Community College, Walmart's McDonald's in Charlottesville, Virginia, and even that one time in the newly opened Target, and when I was dogpiled on by the damn police, freaking jerk -ops. So including that one time I ended up in jail, and so many other times, trials and tribulations, good and bad. I even counted the times when I was manipulated, ugh by the damn trolls and bullies who pretended to be women, who sincerely liked to loved me. This shirt was there too. I look at this shirt and I see myself from more than two years ago, and I wish I could go back and redirect myself for something better. And this shirt has been mistakenly left in a random black plastic bag for three years, damp along with the other garments in that same bag, after the house fire of January 10th, 2015, until the morning of April 19th, 2017, where I rushed it into the washer and dryer after digging the relic out, and it came out just as clean and good as it was before the house fire. I let this shirt remain damp and torn from its history before 2014, with all the tears and holes remaining in it. I feel I owe it to this shirt to personally restore it as best as possible, especially for in the events it is to be work again. It can look about as good as it was before 2004, when my family and I bought it. Even if it is sold highly and framed for prosperity, this one iconic shirt, with all the history in it, will go on looking as good and as clean and filled with more love, heart and soul for myself, personally, as it never had been before. I'm still continuing this shirt repairing project, regardless of what you haters say, for as I see it, being as well restored from a beyond help label as possible, and by the sole owner and author slash artist of the books, the shirt has been featured in throughout of all people. I feel that makes it more valuable. I would even autograph it on the inside in permanent ink to really seal the deal. 
It's all there. Thank you. Sincerely with love. Christine slash Christian slash Christopher Weston Chandler. Wow. Also on that day. So do we get to see how fucking abysmal this uh, shirt's going to look soon? Do we get to see how absolutely horrible dog shit it's going to look? Or no? Is that something that we don't get the privilege of seeing? ...to announce the winner of Rasanju figure and other Skylanders-related merchandise. It's May 1st, and as promised, I'm going to decide winners. I've gone to the, uh, to, the, to the eBay sales from between March 26th and today. There's Sorbet. It's become a cat video again. I know. I'm a cat video. Yeah, I love you too. All right, so anyway, so we have only 11 possible winners, so everybody's a winner. But only one can get the whole set of... <laughs> we have 11 possible winners. Everyone's a winner. That makes perfect sense. I mean, I guess only 11 people... Uh, I guess only 11 people would actually participate. Is that what we're saying here? The Sanchu figure. And my figure. Alright, so I'm gonna pretty much mm -hmm. just go through it down the list. Going, like, similar to a coin flip, I have a die. And a nice cup. Same. I also I'm want gonna die. go down the list. And even numbers are heads, so the one with the most heads after doing them, after going down, and I'll be skipping over everybody who gets tails throughout each round. Wow. She uses her methodology to randomly eliminate nine contenders. Heads. All right, so it's down to the final two. Well, there's only, is that, are they saying there's only 11 people wanted to play this game or whatever? Is that what we're saying? What the fuck? Who gets one of which will get everything here. So. Because one purpose churches before the other, the big lady will be heads, two, four, six, and Stefan will be tails, one, three, five, last die roll. Everybody ready? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I mean, this is kind of a fun game, I guess. Uh, okay. Wow, Chris, it looks like Chris invented a gambling. Christine invented gambling, am I right? And the winner is Stefan! Stefan, you get wow, all these prizes! Stephen. Wow! All right, so you will be expecting to receive these, everything in one big box. You will. In about uh, you'll ex you'll be expecting to receive a lot of things. Now that expectation may not be met, though, uh, as we've seen, Christine seems to struggle to meet expectations of people. <laughs> the month of April, May, and about the month of June, because I'm still waiting for the cards, and I still got order. I'm still gonna get the figures. But you are the big winner, Mr. Stefan. Yay! Wow, yay. Thank you, and have a good evening. Okay, cool stuff. On Beans. May 4th, Chris officially declared her classic shirt restored and posted a photo of herself wearing it at the End Games card game shop in Charlottesville. How? The next day. Wait, her what? They actually did? There's no way that, 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 that they actually were able to restore that. That looks... What? Wait. Wait. Who can, can we can we see it up close? Brother Cole Smithy pleaded on Twitter for people to become supporters on his Patreon page to keep his oh, phone review. Oh, they bought a new one. I'm about to say. Okay, that makes more sense. And okay. criticism outlets alive. Chris replied, stating that she would pledge, but he had yet to apologize for what he did to their mother. Okay. Also on that day, she featured the shirt in a new Captain's Log video. Yes, I have finished it. As you have seen in all the videos and photographs of which I've uploaded. I've actually gotten local praise for the shirt locally from other people. I local, hate huh? that haters have to feel like they continue hating. I'd like to see y'all do any better at sewing and mending. Not everybody has even a small skill level and instinct. It was simple. Put a needle in the thread. A little bit of Jordan Peterson in the voice, you know? And then pop it from through a piece of fabric. You think it's so simple. You try it. Go ahead. Try it for yourself. No, thanks. Anyway, as for the uh, sale of the shirt, I had to cancel that order. So, obviously, I never received the payment from that lady in Wisconsin. And yeah. obviously, her son would be quite disappointed. I feel for them as, I feel for him as well, but she <laughs> has sure. been belaboring it. I've been more than patient. So, yeah, buy the stamp album and the drawings. Okay. Won't Help me do. out here, please. Help me out. No. That's pretty much the big topic on my mind. Finances is the big stressor in my life. Uh, if it weren't for financial problems, if we had a lot more money, if we didn't have the freaking mortgage and all the credit card debts, we'd be a lot, we'd be a lot more better off here at home. Probably. Could yeah. actually use the money for, you know, just yeah. Well, we do we do Video a lot games? better, but we can't. That what you use it for? Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Wow, it's kind of sad. Just 
My life. Honestly. My life. Welcome to it. Welcome mm. to my life. Uh, I guess that's it for right now, so I'll do another Captain's Log video next week, so until then, everyone take care and have a good night. Okay, you too. With the return of the classic, Christine tried yet another way to capitalize on her past infamy. However, it proved to yield no financial gain, as the value she believed it had was a product of her perceived worldwide appreciation and fame, thinking she had a loyal fan base of millions. Nevertheless, she would soon venture down another path, another hearkening back to old times, a return to the very thing that placed her in the public spotlight. You mean Sonic Chew? Like you should have done in the first place? That makes sense, sure. Wow. I guess to say finally. Finally getting back to the OG. All right. Very cool. Well, I gotta. I, mean, I have to become a patron. I think I have to become a patron here. Um. Wow. Incredible stuff. Double header. Um. I don't know about a double header. I don't know about a double. Actually, yeah. Let's do a double header. Let's do it. Actually, let's just do a double header. Yeah. You're right. Let's do it. That one's louder. What made her this way. Whoa, Gino! You finally fixed your sound. What is the attraction? Turn this down a little bit, brother. What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. Okay. Let's get the story going. There we go. On May 8th. 2017. After a Wait, five how the f what the fuck? <laughs> I think we already Chris writes Christine writes very weirdly. I'm just saying. 61 day long hiatus. Christine began drawing new pages for her Sonichu issue 11 comic book, showcasing her process via a 39 minute long YouTube video. Wow. Even though she can be seen talking at times, her microphone seems to have been disabled for the recording. <laughs> on May 11th, Chris wrote on Facebook that she was a contender for the best local minor celebrity poll listed by Charlottesville's Seville Weekly newspaper and asked for people to celebrity. vote for her. At the time of her announcement, she was in third place with 7% of the vote. Wow. She also privately messaged her That's Facebook friends funny. asking them for their vote. The list was one of many polls on the magazine which accepted nominations from anyone online. Christine was also in the running for best TV personality and local radio personality. <laughs> Among the list of best musicians was Christian and the Hedgehog Boys, and the poll for best neighborhood featured Quickville. Oh my God. Thanks to many online observers, Chris quickly climbed to the number one spot in the local minor celebrity category, which was a feat soon repeated in other categories. Christine soon after left an update on Facebook, stating that she was to be voted for in the local minor celebrity category only, and pleaded for people not to add her into any other categories with which she had no involvement. Oh my the God. following day, moderators for the polls stepped in to remove anything quick-related, though eventually more falsified nominations were added in again by Weens. After a while, the Seville website reported that due to supposed frustrating technical glitches, the nominations had to be started over. Chris blamed Trolling Stupids for mass voting her out. Trolling On Stupids. The 13th, in response to an article regarding possible surgery, which would make trans women able to carry a child through pregnancy, Chris expressed her elation at the prospect of finally becoming a mother. The next day, she wished for a happy Mother's Day to all mothers who she thought were amazing, especially Rose Chu and Simone La, sharing a panel from her Sonichu comic, featuring Rose Chu frantically doing housework. Of course, those would be the first two on my list of amazing mothers, uh, Rose Chu and Simone La. On May 15th, she live-streamed herself using the photo manipulation and alteration software Photoshop to create a large composite portrait of herself, her parents, and her Sonichu characters. We have already done the drawings and scanned them into the computer in which we are going to put these pictures onto the pre-taken photographs for my for the 11th book. So right now I'll be transferring you live to my laptop. All right, now I got, okay, here's the layer. All right, then check heads, so head shape size there. Hmm. I think I'm gonna shrink them just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Yeah, good. They'll be right there. Now look at the close. When I've worked on my shirt recently, I've noticed that the fabric weaving pattern was similar to that on my father's sweater. It made me cry a little bit. That's it. <sighs> On May 18th, Christine reported on Twitter that a troll texted her to say that he was from the future, 
She replied by saying that he should go back because he had forgotten their 2010 to 2020 sports almanac. The next day, <laughs> the after fuck? not returning home the night before. Oh, I get it. It's a Back to the Future reference. <laughs> I'm surprised. Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't know why you'd think that Christian would leave that. It's a. It's almost a good thing though that the troll. The, the trolls are terrible at trolling now because you know you really shouldn't be trolling Christine, but. You know, sometimes I unfortunately do miss the... Sometimes the old days are missed a little bit, you know, even if it's bad. Even if it's a bad. The Chandler's cat, Sorbet, was found by a neighbor hiding in a gutter in their driveway. Wow. The cat was only moved after being sprayed with water from a hose. Okay. After checking with a veterinarian, Sorbet was found to have suffered head trauma, and even pupil dilation, bruises, and some bleeding. The doctor concluded that he had likely been struck by a car and would stay at the vet over the weekend. Oh, that's sad. On the 21st, Chris revealed the cover art for Sonichu issue 12 prominently addressing LGBTQ themes, as the scene was set during the annual so-called SLGBTQ Pride Festival of Quickville. Chris addressed the addition of the S to the acronym in a Facebook post. Let's talk a bit about my idea of adding the S to LGBTQ. Firstly, the S is for straight, or cisgender. Both the straight and cisgender flags are up- I don't know if you... I don't know if you need to add straight people to that there, Christine. Uh... I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, okay. Cool, cool beans. Cool Above beans. the S, I feel it's beneficial and good to include the straight slash cisgender as to not leave them feeling left out. Why? I mean, we, the LGBTQ, have our straight allies and supporters, and to figure ourselves as... Yeah, so like if you were going to add something, you'd add like ally into the mix. There, there you go. Oh, we're going to add ally. Oh, okay. That makes... Hey, there we go. Allies. Cool. We don't, you don't need to add straight people, do you? Like, why the fuck? Why? Different from them in a sense, have seeded the idea of our community in us. Regardless, we do welcome them to our pride festivals and events, but they each may have been feeling singled and left out. Plus, okay. look at the acronym this way, SLGBTQ. We, the LGBT, and everyone in between. Uh, am I gonna die? The Q being the queer and questioning, either amongst our allies amongst and us, those yeah. who may be exploring and figuring themselves out, and the S, our allies, most of, at least, that were here before us, and we still welcome them, at least the ones with open hearts. We, the LGBTQ, still strive and work towards equality and freedom, like everyone else. Have we totally considered the same for them? We are equal to everyone, and we are to remain included, and the least to return the favor unto them. Include their flags and letter in what we already have. The total salad of a multitude of variants that makes us all as a whole a damn great salad, wow. meats and fruits included. We, the whole world this together, so are the SLGBTQ. Thank you. On May 22nd, Thank you, Christine Chris. reported I that Sorbet so had been brought now. back from the vet and shared the latest pictures of him. He was feeling better, even though his left pupil was still dilated. Two days later, Chris made an update video for YouTube. Uh, just much pretty better. much, uh, this video is their plea for money because we're really broke and my mother needs more of her meal replacement shakes right now. Uh, it's not hard enough to last throughout the rest of the month. But she anyway, but obviously, as y'all have uh, may have noticed on my Facebook, I have been, but I have made, complete a bunch more pages for book 11. Okay. Here, screen cap that. Ugh, kaput dicks. Why? The internet trolls. Ugh, kaput dicks. But anyway, yes, my mother and I, we need a lot more money, please. So, please donate to the link below. No less than $1. No change. We want dollar amounts. Okay. And definitely, from each person, the recommended amount that the link suggests. Please, please, please. We need the money for more food. Ugh. Another week and a half to go. Oh, my God. And the sorbet. And the vet bill was $160. Ugh. Anyway, please help us. I mean, it... Listen, I'm not trying to be rude, but if you were able to pay for the cat, I don't know. Maybe you should have just let the cat die. I don't know, man. I'm not trying to be fucking rude, but if you're th this much of like a the financial situation, you know? I, 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 I know it's harsh, but... Thank you. Have a good day. In response, several followers donated amounts of less than $1 to Chris. Oh my god. As a consequence, <laughs> Chris made another video to reiterate her original plea. I said nothing under a dollar in donations <laughs> no donations less than one dollar uh, we need the money <laughs> i'm sorry we need the money 
It's just it's just funny because like they're giving you money. It's like who cares how much it is? Because if like a thousand people give you a dollar, that's a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like that's incredible. And nothing less than a dollar. You're just being a gratuitous dickhead. That's fucking. You're being stupid. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It is funny though. I'm fucking dying here. And what do we need it for? For food. Weed. And you've been needing a lot of marijuana. I don't know. Uh, I told him that you, I reminded him that you need a lot of the shakes. Yeah. Okay. Tough shit. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, okay. tell them. No donations less than one dollar. No donations less than one dollar. No. USA. Thank you very much. Hell yeah, USA. Some viewers felt that Christine's behavior towards Barbara could be considered elder abuse and made their feelings publicly known to her. Chris deleted the video soon after, but it was downloaded by Christorians and re-uploaded onto YouTube again. On May okay. 29th, Christine offered a video update on her cat, Sorbet. Instigate clue. Hi, Sorbet. You're breathing okay? No. Sound like you're being too mad. Oh, bless you. That might be cute, though. Okay. Well, we will try. I'll let you go then. On the final day of May, was Chris she, posted a work of fan art she, of a fictitious cover for Sonichu issue 13. Was she, to be was she listening to Womanizer? That might be cute, though. Okay. Well, we will try. I'll let you go then. She was. Woman. Hey, I got to hear. That's, my, that's May, what I get out of this Chris video. Chris posted a work of a fictitious cover for Sonichu issue 13, set to be a crossover of Sonichu characters and characters from the Planet Dolan conglomerate of um, YouTube channels. Us. Also on that day, she notified her followers that she was planning on posting completed Sonichu pages on Patreon, made available only to paying patrons, and would only make them available to the public once the comic book was completed. Chris proceeded to upload freshly finished pages of issue 11 on Patreon, though one of the paying patrons was in fact a spy from Kiwi Farms, oh, no. who then made the pages public. On June 3rd, she posted a drawing of herself in her pony persona form, Nightstar. Two days later, she asked on Facebook if people would be interested in seeing her binders of original drawings of the comic books. She determined to show them off if her post received 1,000 positive reactions. On June 7th, she offered a video update concerning the progress of her comic book. Uh, currently the previews are, that have been colored are up to page 61. We're up to about page 65 or 6 right now in the book. And... Yes, I finally got my, my own complete collection of my own books, printed well by my publisher. And, that, and also through Patreon, this will pretty much be the only way at the moment to get copies of my book, including those beyond book four. Mm, I'm trying to, all right. Uh, let me see what else. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Mm. Uh, my big Sachi binders three of them now, counting the one with all the cards and my own pugs. Mm. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole lot of crazy artwork. Actually, there's a fourth book, but that'll be a separate volume because that is uh, X-rated. <laughs> anyway. What, are they drawing fucking Sonic you porn? What the fuck? Volumes of my art book. Art binder, art books, illustrations. Hmm. Yeah, let me see what else. Anything else? Anything else? Hmm. I'm still, anyway, I'm still thinking and processing and possibly further developments, uh, actual, and trying to keep the haters out of the loop about that. Okay. Mark. So there. It's all good. Thank you very much and have a good day. On June 11th, Christine apologized on Facebook for failing to reply to many business inquiries and fan questions, stating that she needed a team of representatives to keep up with all incoming queries. She then sent out the message that if any fans were capable and willing to make better Sonichu fan art, fan fiction, or games, she would allow them to do so freely and would consider it as official Sonichu merchandise. She gave guidelines for the stories that creators should follow, such as adhering to the characters she created and maintaining content fit for a seven-year-old. She apologized for expressing hate for past fan art and once again supported the idea of fan-created Sonichu media before she could make it officially herself. On June 12th, Chris appeared at a remembrance ceremony held at the University of Virginia in honor of the people who died at the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida. 
She brought with her her son medallion, a drawing showing solidarity for the SLGBTQ community, the photoshopped family photograph of the Chandlers and her characters set in a photo frame, and a handwritten poetic letter and drawing which she recited in front of the attendees. The local NBC News station was at the event and featured Christine expressing her opinions. The University of Virginia community is also honoring the victims of that mass shooting from one year ago. New tonight, the student body at UVA hosted a memorial service to honor the 49 victims who lost their lives at the nightclub in Orlando, Florida. This all unfolded on the steps of the rotunda along University Avenue. The two-hour-long event included an opportunity for people to create art and share their tributes. Do not hate. Hate is not so good. Oh my God. And to be paranoid is a, is a bust. Feel the love that comes from us and try to feel love that you can offer, at least from within yourselves, for yourselves. People also read the names of those killed out loud during the ceremony. The event helped to promote equality and diversity. Later that day, Beautiful. Chris live-streamed herself reciting the poetic letter, which she had read out Fox at the memorial service. Well. Unfortunately, she failed to notice that her microphone had been disabled and did not capture any part of her recitation. Mm -hmm. Her letter read in part, I feel for y'all, my friends, family, and allies in this lifetime of ours. Lost and confused oh, is this point of our lives where we are meant to be. Where do we belong in our local communities, with minds gone blank like a fully erased paper? We are left with the remnants of what we had thought of before impulsively lost in time. I, too, was there during the times y'all were bullied, broken, and beat up bad. The times we've sought for new friendships to later, maybe, find truest love from one within. Soon enough, we not only have found ourselves, but we three, child, teen, and adult, combined, worked out our ideas, taking our time, we continue onward in our life, from how we were born, towards who we are meant to be this whole lifetime. I will continue onward, the stronger soul, woman, that we are, for being boy, was a lingering downfall. Someday, I will find our destined sweetheart and truest love, while feeling the love from within, from child, from teen, from me. Upon realizing that she failed to record audio, Chris deleted it from her YouTube account. How did how did they not catch that beforehand? Do you you don't watch your videos at all before? Po I mean, I don't know why I'm saying that. Like, I'm surprised. Like, I would be surprised by that. But okay. June fourteenth, she made a video addressing the issue of some of her patrons leaking Sonichu pages to the public. Uh, I have it has been brought to my attention that apparently those who have made the contribution to Patreon are abusing their privilege and leaking the pages amongst the internet that I put up there. So. Let's not do that, oh, okay? Totally That's not cool. That's like movie pirating. You don't steal a woman's purse. You don't steal anybody's cell phone. So I don't know what you're talking about. I do all the time. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. Oh, I don't steal up. the pages. All right? Uh, you got it, Be boss. legit. Be honest. Be loyal. I believe in the kindness of people. Wow. Beautiful. So, assistance. Oh, fuck, dude. I was... <sighs> I had won that, and then I went back to, and I, dude, I messed up so bad there. Did you? Oh my god! Club is ready. I'd send copies out to every Patreon that has paid, that has been paying, and uh, so on with uh, book twelve and thirteen, fourteen, so on, so forth. And I think that'll just about cover it for now. So until next video, be Captain's log or random stream. Everybody, have a good safe day. Two days later. Chris posted a short video featuring her mother, Barbara. We are in need of donations for food. Please consider us. Thank you. It's a little spooky there, yeah. On June 20th, Christine shared a year-old Facebook post of her wishing her father a happy Father's Day, adding that she still missed him every day. Later on, so. she wrote a lengthy post regarding the ages of her characters. Simply put, it is inconsistent cartoon logic. Around the time I specified the main eight's ages in Book 8, I was under a lot of unwarranted questions about their bloody age in relations to the content slash miscontent of what I drew and wrote beforehand. Ugh! I was still testing the waters of the story typings, parodies, what works slash doesn't work. It is very common amongst the beginning book authors, even in televised cartoons and video games. I dare put unto you all, Ash Ketchum is still 10 years old, Sonic the Hedgehog is still 16 years old, and Stewie Griffin is still one year old, while during the Family Guy series, Megan has gone from 16 to 18 years old. Twilight Sparkle and the main six are teens to adults, while Celestia and Luna are like a thousand years old. Even XJ9, Jenny, while built a few years prior, her mindset is teenager! Sigh and well, I mean, that's also a robot. It's a little, little different there. You know, not. I mean, I'm just saying that one's a little different, but okay. Grown, 
I feel the best way to answer this annoying question to everyone is to not think or overthink about it. We, the artists, creators, and writers, specify an age to our character, at least I feel, when it can be deemed warranted. We do not have to consistently celebrate birthdays or let our characters age canonically or not in our works. The obvious, simple, not to overthink, straight up answer from all of us creators is just take the characters' age as we have given them, respectively. And in my case, the main eight are more than 20 years old. May as well be over 21 now. Sarah, Christine, and Roberta are teenagers, close to equal 17 years old. And Sandy and Zepina Rose Juice are in the fourth grade, despite Sandy being less than a year old physically, but mentally equivalent to the typical fourth grader age. Once again, take each character's age at provided value. Sounds unless yucky. Unless we later say different. Shut the f*** up. Ugh. There you go. Good, good answer. On the final day of June, Christine uploaded the final pages of Sonichu issue 11 oh, on her Patreon page, officially lose. completing the comic eight years after its inception. The comic begins with a Sonichu Christmas special episode it. set in December 2008. In the Sonichu I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Okay. Two families home, little Christine, the Rosie, prepares for her elementary school theatrical performance of the nativity scene, while Rosechu and her daughter Sarah bake cookies. In the rec room, Sonichu and his son, Robbie, hang stockings by the fireplace. In the kitchen, Sarah thanks her mother for letting some of her friends come over for the Christmas party, and shows her that she made one cookie in the shape of a candle for her friend Kevin, because Beautiful. he is Jewish. Sarah also made it okay. vanilla flavor to keep the ingredients neutral to avoid an allergic reaction from other flavors. In preparation for an incoming snowstorm, Sonichu goes out to buy groceries and extra supplies, while Christine recites Mary's song from the Gospel according to Luke 146.5 to 55 in preparation for her play. The next day, it is announced that Anne Weston Elementary School would be closed on the count of the storm, so the children would stay home for the time being. Sonichu then goes out to work through the chimney because the doors of the house are blocked with snow. He then uses his powers of super speed to clear the surroundings of snow. Over the coming days, Robbie plays games on the Nintendo Wii and watches Christmas cartoons. Sarah continues to rehearse her lines for her school performance, and their mother, Rose Chu, frantically cleans the house. One day during a playdate at the boy Kevin's house, Sarah plays the combat video game Call of Duty World at War with him. She becomes too embroiled in the action and in a reckless move causes Kevin's character to die, which upsets him. Sarah tells him to not get so attached to a set of digital pixels, but he states that he spent over a whole month leveling up and learning the Treden, preparing for his first war game, only to be quickly killed by Sarah's arrogant actions. To comfort him, she offers um, him the cookie she baked in the sh- Where does he get this information? Like, wh why is this something that resonates with him so much? I'm very confused. Why is this a storyline? That she got beat by a girl, and now he's upset? This is very bizarre to me. Okay. Shape of a candle. Kevin looks at the candle's flame and is reminded of the explosion which killed him. He slaps it out of her hand and smashes it to pieces against the TV. Oh, she runs so upstairs good. crying, while Sarah realizes that she has hurt him and decides it best to leave. Okay. Later in Sarah's room, she has a telepathic conversation with Magi-chan, who comforts her, but lets her know that she and Kevin will most likely not retain their fondness for each other, and tells her that she should do something to make up for her actions. Two Very days sad. later, while out shopping, Sonichu and Robbie come across a crying woman who tells them that she lost her job and was then evicted because she could not pay rent. Robbie bursts out that her story was distressing and would also feel the same way if that happened to him. Sonichu apologizes for his son, clarifying that he is very caring and empathetic. They call for a taxi for her that would bring her to a nearby soup hotel where she could stay. Meanwhile, while Blake and Bubbles are out together, Enos, the homeless Jamaican drug addict, wishes Blake a happy Kwanzaa. Okay. He is angered by once again being mistaken for an African American. Bubbles calms him down. The book then flashes back to August, referring to the time when Simone LaRoschew was presumed to have died from an explosion conducted by the Asperpedia 4. The doctors at the time are amazed to see that she is coming back to life. Later, doctors find that her skeletal structure is made of simitanium, an incredibly strong metal which also runs in her blood and organs, meaning that she can regenerate her own organs and bones. She is instructed to spend more time resting and recovering. On December 15th, she is discharged from hospital and is reunited with her husband, Wild Sonichu, and their daughter, Sandy. Meanwhile, in the mountains, Magichan and Silvana Rosechu express their love for each other and acknowledge that Silvana's former father figure, Count Graduan, would eventually return, but she has been learning to break free from his teachings. They then kiss and express their intentions to fornicate. Later that same night, <laughs> during the school nativity play, wow, Christine... What, when did we introduce this uh, Jamaican character? I never knew that one. That's Jamaican me crazy, you know? ...feels something happening to her and rushes backstage. Sonichu and Rosechu take note and get ready to come to her aid, when Christine text messages Rosechu, telling her that she is evolving into her final form and that she needs new clothes. Rosechu instructs Sonichu to run home and bring their daughter a change of clothes. One minute later, Rosechu and her two other children come to Christine's dressing room. Christine tells her family that she evolved and had a huge growth spurt, which caused her clothes to be ripped apart. 
Rosechu tells her to keep a happy Ew, thought and sing fuck? something. The mother and daughter then sing, I'm not a girl, not yet a woman, by Britney Spears together, on either side of the door. Sonichu then comes back with new clothes. Christine changes into her new outfit and comes out on stage just in time to sing her song with confidence. As her parents admire her performance, Sarah and Kevin discuss what happened at their playdate. She apologizes for blowing up his in-game character and offers him three cookies she baked in the shape of dreidels. Kevin explains that he learned to appreciate teamwork and that her aggressive and rash actions made him dislike her. He thanks her for being his friend. Oh wait, they were playing. They weren't playing on. This, they were on the same team, and then she killed him. I'm very confused. How the fuck? This story doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Playmate and hopes that she can grow up and mature more. Sarah cries, and her brother Robbie comes to comfort her. The family soon reunite as a whole and drive back home. On Christmas Day, all the Sonichus gather around the large Christmas tree in the Quickville shopping center to exchange gifts and embrace each other romantically. Wow, beautiful. Simone remarks that she hasn't seen Christian lately and asks about him. Roshu tells her that since he came back from the future, he, or rather she, has been adjusting from the future shock. Roshu goes on to explain in depth how in 2014, Christian realized that his soul was female and so changed her pronouns, her name, and began the process of physical transformation as well, course, all the while course, continuing course. to be attracted to women. After their past, Christian returned from 2015. He started to readjust, and by October, had finally realized her true self. Sonichu adds that the news blew him away too, and had come to regret his past ill words against the gays. He says he was mostly upset with trolls and bullies for their mislabelings of him and Chris, and acknowledged that he has no ill will towards the gays, and that there was nothing wrong with what they did, though he never found any interest in their actions. With Christine becoming part of the LGBTQ communities, Sonichu and Rosechu have learned oh. to be more accepting I, I, I feel like I had gotten this. I know I'm like upset. I feel like I had just gotten this. And then I quit out. And now I just can't get it. I'm fucking upset. And supportive. And even hired their next door lesbian neighbor to be their babysitter. Solely oh. on the basis of her work credentials. All the Sonichus and Rosechus agreed to go to Christine's house to cheer her up. Since she had been in seclusion, mentally recovering. The next panels show photos of Christine playing herself. Incorporated into the comics. The Sonichus welcome her back and state that they have missed her. Blake approaches Chris and compliments her bust. She thanks him, but states that she was not interested in any of his advances. Blake clarifies that he was quite surprised by her appearance. They then all pose for a photo, featuring all the main Sonichu characters, her parents Barbara and Bob, and her Transformer car, Sonchu. The scene then switches to December 17th, 2008, at a dig site in Virginia, where Simonchu is digging underground looking for fossils while repeatedly- Simonchu? Wow, I like that one a lot. That's my favorite, I think getting blown up by Voltorbs, a type of Pokemon. The readers are then reminded that in August, he had aided in the killing of Simonla, his sister. Meanwhile, Simonchu receives an email from his sister, writing that she had made a full recovery, and that he was welcome to visit any time. He decides to head on over. The scene once again flashes back to the modified ending of issue 10, wherein the Asperpedia 4 are condemned to live the rest of their lives in the Amish community devoid of modern technology. Part of the sentence was that all the Pokemon they had trained, including Simonchu, were to be released after being rehabilitated. He was warned by Wild to never come near their family again. Back on December 18th, Simonchu comes to Simonla's house. She welcomes him in, while Simonla's daughter Sandy comes back home. She yells to her mother to get away from that male, but Simonla demands her to apologize to Uncle Simon. Wild Sonichu then also comes back home Uncle and Simon. reacts in hate at Simonchu's sight, pulling out a vine and whipping him with it. Simonchu then faints, while Simonla calls for them to stop the madness. She explains to her family that her brother was a victim of circumstance and forgives him for what he did, and she expects her husband and daughter to forgive him as well. During the family reunion dinner, Simonchu explains how he was captured by Evan Christopher George and strained to carry out his and his cohort's evil deeds. He then reflects how after he was released, he took an interest to geology and collecting fossils. Sandy offers to bring the mystery fossil her uncle brought with him to the Quickville Museum. Christine Chandler interjects as the narrator to apologize for failing to title the episode beforehand. She also adds that the story is derived from a script given to her by her Facebook friend and financial contributor, William Elliot Waterman, but she had taken some liberties with his story and altered it to add more details. Episode 23, Simonchu and Banana Fungal formally begins Banana in Quidville Museum, <laughs> where Simonchu and his niece submit wow. the unknown fossil sample for research to a yet-to-be-introduced Blue Rose Chew, whom Simonchu fancies. Fifteen minutes later, the researcher comes back to tell them that the fossil is a newly discovered Pokemon, which had been revived and then given back to them within a Pokeball. Wow. It was dubbed Bananasaur. Simachu opens the Pokeball to release the small green dinosaur-like Pokemon, which could only speak gibberish. From far away, Punchy Sonichu could hear and comprehend the Bananasaur's thoughts and rushes to meet him and his keepers in the museum. The Pokemon and Punchy communicate with each other telepathically and bond over their shared love of the rock band ACDC. At Simonchu's request, Punchy agrees to take care of him since he seemed to be the only one able to understand him. 
he feeds the Bananasaur a strawberry-flavored Pocky, and then it suddenly evolves into its next evolutionary stage, a larger yellow banana-shaped creature called Bananasauros. Punchy brings him home and introduces him More like Bananasaur ass, if you know what I'm saying. Because it gets fucked in the ass. ...to his girlfriend, Layla Flaffy. She then calls Punchy over to the kitchen to discuss the uninvited guest privately, angered by his sudden appearance, as she is not ready to accommodate him. She begrudgingly accepts to try to cope with the Bananasaurus, but claims she will leave him if it becomes too much to bear. Punchy and his Pokémon then bond over some video games. Later at the daycare center, Punchy encourages the Bananasaurus to mate with a Pokémon, Ditto, which then shapeshifts to appear like a Bananasaurus. About an hour after ferocious intercourse, the Ditto lays two eggs. On another day, the two practice fighting at Nabe's wow. Dojoshin, but Bananasaurus keeps getting bested by Punchy. He then whips out a skateboard, and they have one final match, which results in both of them needing to be hospitalized. On December 22nd, they come back home to find that Layla had packed her suitcase and is ready to move out. She says that she had unfriended him on Facebook and never wants to see him again. Punchy accepts her words as she punches Bananasaurus in the face on her way out, calling him bruised and unfruitful. Christine interjects once again to inform the viewers that time was short. <laughs> Called the banana a, a bruised and unfruitful. Is that what they said? <laughs> this is why are these dad jokes so fucking stupid? What did I just do? Ew. To complete the episode, so she offers a brief summary of what happens next. Layla goes to stay with a temporary caregiving trainer, William Faulkner, as the banana Soros gets too comfortable living in Punchy's house, playing video games all day, and not cleaning up after himself. Sounds like Chris. Luckily for Punchy, the banana Pokemon is soon given the job of cleaning and maintaining the dojo. Then, Magichan interrupts the narrative to inform the reader that he had been busy collecting Sonichites and Rosechites, a newly introduced item based on the Mega Stones from Pokémon, which could temporarily induce evolutions of the Electric Hedgehog Pokémon into their Mega Forms. Also, a spot of havoc was averted at the SLGBTQ Pride Festival in 2009. In the behind-the-scenes prologue of the next episode, Silvana Rosechu is receiving a spa treatment. As she finishes, a stagehand informs her that she has 60 seconds before the film crew starts filming, as if the episode were to be recorded like a TV show. She then transforms into the guest star of the episode, Sonic the Hedgehog, whom she will be playing throughout episode 24, part 1, The Clip Show. On August 21st, 2009, Sonic meets Sonichu and Rosechu at Quickville Shopping Center. Sonichu and Sonic reminisce about recent happenings. Sonichu recounts an account of bullying experienced by his children Robbie and Sarah, and then their fight against the Dirkop. Sarah then suddenly evolved and grew in size, vowing not to wear skirts or overly feminine attire, preferring to wear jeans and a t-shirt. Sonichu adds that a month or two after that event, Robbie came out as a lesbian soul and then evolved into Roberta, having Beautiful. fully transformed her body into that of a female, and has never felt happier or more confident. Christine Chandler then surprises both Sonichu and Sonic, and to convince Sonic that she was indeed the same person who created Sonichu, she transforms into her Christian Sonichu form. She explains to Sonic that this happened after Chris returned from his trip to 2015 and had Slowil Rhyme arrested. While still in this colossal Christian form, he ponders that he indeed felt more feminine in his high school years, and finally comes to terms that his soul was female. He then transforms into the female form of colossal Christian. After briefly admiring herself in the mirror, the energies of the Sonichu crystals, which caused her to transform into her current state, then escape her body and sync with the energies which had departed Sonichu earlier, and they merge in the moonlight. The combination of energies create crystals, and then they all shatter and fall to the earth in millions of pieces. Chris returns to her female Christian Sonichu form and finds one of the shattered crystals, or the Sonichite, on the ground. Meanwhile, Sonichu and Rosechu watch the explosion in the sky, and then pick up Sonichites, which fell to the ground. They suddenly evolve into their Ultra Sonichu and Incredible Lioness forms, respectively. Their powers soon wear off, Incredible and they return lioness. to normal. Christine recounts that Magichan has been collecting all the unique Sonichites meant for each individual Sonichu and Rosechu, and now the Sonichus have them sewed into their socks, and the Rosechus have them put into their barrets. They would be used as a last resort to transform into their unique mega forms. Christine then gets a call from her father, who wants her to go buy some TV dinners and soup. Sonichu and Sonic discuss meeting up again soon, at which point Sonichu will talk about the wedding. The comic concludes with a vow for the story to be continued. That was the, I thought that was a conclusion, though. Why would there be a to-be-continued in there? Doesn't really make sense to me, but okay. That was horrible. Who the fuck... Why do people... Why do people want to see this so bad? It's terrible. It's dog shit. What's wrong with you guys? Did I win this time? I got it this time. Nice. On July 3rd, Christine shared a photo of one of her favorite works of fan art, encouraging her that her sweetheart was out there somewhere. The photo also revealed that Chris kept printed versions of private Facebook messages from at least her friend, Jessica Quinn. Why? On the 4th, Chris wished her Facebook followers a happy Independence Day, sharing an altered page from her latest Sonichu comic. 
Two days later, she wrote that she cooked a hot hamburger plate with mashed potatoes and gravy, inspired by the work of her late father's old friend, Tony, and posted a photo of it. However, Kiwi Farms user Lucas Wolf looked up the term hot hamburger plate on Google and found the image Chris used to be the first result on the image search. On July 7th, she posted another Captain's Log video asking about sponsorships. Just a nice, just a short update today because what else, what else? We're up to page 14 in book 12. Okay. Although it's not totally covered, those are not totally covered in yet. We're up to page eight on the Could you imagine Christian gets sponsored? That would be incredibly bad. I don't know. But that'd be, that'd be fucking nuts, honestly. But okay. Coloring process. And those pages will be uploaded onto my Patreon on due, on due time on Sunday. Anyway, so another thing I just another no, thought I it would had. be it would be incredible, honestly. You know who would definitely sponsor Christian? Um what's his name? The quartering, right? Doesn't he sponsor everybody? They'd be sponsored by that. You know? He'd do it. He'd do it. Add, you know, I often like I often use and enjoy using this Crayola super tip markers. I was thinking like you know, I'm wondering. Do, do uh, artists sometimes take sponsorships? Because if Crayola's hiring and accepting Crayola. us to be their sponsors, that's a, that's a bold sponsor. I highly would uh, endorse ask. the Crayola products. Yeah, yeah you are. I just love coloring. I do enjoy. You are right on brand, Christine, for Crayola. <laughs> Why the fuck would Crayola sponsor you? Fucking Crayola of all things. That's incredible. What a fucking bold ask. But hey, listen. You know, shoot for the stars, am I right? Am I right or what? Coloring with the Crayola Super Tip Markers, especially from the 50 pack. And I miss those 12, that set of 12 fun sanded markers. Yeah, they smelled the best, right? Anyway, just a thought I had, so that's going to be pretty much it for this week's uh, this week's Captain's Log. I'll check in a okay. week or two with another update. Have a good, safe day, everyone. Thank you for your patronage. She later expanded on her message in a Facebook post. Seriously, I could do a commercial for Crayola, rather just to add color to your day, or just keeping it all inside the drawn lines. Hashtag Crayola rocks for artists of all ages. On July 8th, Chris commented on Twitter that after reading Sonichu issue 0 for the first time in many years, and comparing it with her latest comic, she realized how much her artistry had improved. She also made note of some spelling mistakes she had made back in 2004, but she did not overall regret making the books. It was at around this time that Christine began pledging $25 per month to artist and voiceover actress Doopy Doover's Patreon page. As a reward for her patronage, she could request a custom black and white illustration. Chris had asked Doopy to draw Rose Chew, which she did, later thanking her for it, calling the artist Darling. Two days later, Thanks, Doopy darling. wrote on Twitter that she was working on icon commissions from fans live on the streaming site, Twitch. Christine simply replied, Thank you, Doopy Darling, colon close parentheses. Not long after, she face. complained about seeing her father when she looked at herself in the mirror. Chris replied that when she looked at herself, she saw herself who loved her and suggested that Doopy look at herself from a different perspective, ending yeah. with calling her cutie. Ew. The next day, in response to Doopy declaring that she deserved a million dollars, Chris responded that she did too, because she worked a lot around the home and caretaking her mother and also her dad, in addition to the emotional pains. It was also on Hey guys, I was caretaking for my father, uh, even though I wasn't licensed at the time. <clears throat> I mean, I guess that is possible, but I'm pretty sure Chris... Did everything that they could. Christine did everything that they could to distance themselves from helping anybody, anywhere, at any time. So, on that day, that Christine wrote of experiencing a painful few days, only to learn that she had just passed her first kidney stone. On July 11th. Damn, that's oh my god, that's rough. That must have been an e dude. That's got to be difficult passing a kidney stone. You gotta, it's basically that's fucking horrible. How? You you didn't notice that? I don't know. I feel like you would notice that. That's like I've heard that's worse than childbirth. So, in response to uh, Doopy Doover receiving criticism over drawing pornographic imagery of 16-year-old computer graphic Japanese singer Hatsune Miku, Chris okay. wrote that she supported her, calling her a darling sweet soul and a great artist. In response to Doopy Doover seemingly brushing aside Christine's past bad actions because Chris complimented her, Twitter user the smallest mage wrote an extended message telling Doopy that Chris's kind words were merely a facade and that she should be more careful about what she said about Chris before she got mistreated like her other gal pals. The smallest okay. mage advised Doopy to read up on Chris's history on the quickie and encouraged her to not make a fool of herself by making an awful person feel better about themselves. Doopy responded with a similarly length reply stating that she had been following Chris Chan since the beginning and despite all the bad she had done she found the trolls to be just as bad as Chris. 
Do I mean, that's definitely true. Um, that's definitely very true. The trolls are just as bad as Chris, honestly. They're, I mean, you're arguably worse. We don't know, we don't know how Chris would have turned out if they didn't get relentlessly trolled, like, horribly. You know what I mean? Like, they could be, like, maybe they would have been a horrible person. Or maybe they wouldn't have been so bad, but people trolled them so hard. How do we know, you know? How do we don't, we don't know. We can, we can never know. But they got trolled fucking horribly, dude. It's fucking crazy. It be admitted that her kind words may be fake at the show, as she was not emotionally invested in their interactions enough to care. Since Chris was a paying patron and had hired her to do a commission, Doopy showed her the same amount of respect she would to any of her other commissioners or patrons. Okay, Doopy wished for people to keep the matter to themselves and assured her critic that she was a big girl who could handle the situation. In response, Christine wrote a string of tweets. Honestly, how dare you put past errors that I do intend to remedy as soon as humanly possible, albeit within my own financial restrictions. I never intended to scam anyone, so that part of your textful message is BS. And in the years ago, for the latter, I was naive- Yeah, I don't think that uh, Chris Christine would be trying to like manipulate somebody in that capacity. They might- I, I, it, seemed, it probably is as genuine as they can- like, be, Oh my god, I fucked up so bad already. Oh well, that's life, I guess, brother. Okay. For a number of things. Even that was reflected in my previous Sonichu books, as I was testing the woodwork, seeing what works and what not. I actually matured mentally and emotionally, and I have gained more and better wisdom. I, personally, prefer not to address trolls, such as yourself, at the smallest mage. But when one unnecessarily and constantly attacks an innocent person with such outdated trash, then I feel need to step in. In other words, trolling stupid. Quit assuming the worst about me or anyone. All you are doing from that is making an ass yourself at the smallest mage. I will not warn you again. Leave the Ooh. people I talk with alone. Spooky. Good day. Members of the QB Farms then uncovered and publicized the smallest mage's full name, home address, and other social media profiles. Jesus Christ! I mean, I don't agree with them, but they doxed the person? What the fuck? That's terrible. What the fuck? Oh my god. Which prompted the user to delete his Twitter account. Wow. I As Christine don't continued him. to interact with Doopy Doover, she failed to see how she was nothing more than another one of her many supporters hoping against hope to strengthen their relationship, or perhaps advance it further to the next level. She would soon find out that hope can sometimes be a foolish thing. Wow. So poetic, Gina. So poetic. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff, as always. Wow. Okay. Well, um... Another great episode, that's all I can really say. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.